Hello, and welcome to this week's final video. Now, we're going to review key tips for successfully managing question and answer sessions based on what we've studied. Top tip number one, practice makes perfect. When you practice delivering your speech, make a list of potential audience questions in advance and test yourself. Identify the type of question and prepare some useful, polite expressions from the list you made in the previous video to help you deal with those more challenging audience members, such as, I have some reservations about, or I'm afraid, why not deliver your speech in front of some colleagues and ask them to come up with as many tough questions as they can? In that way, you'll feel more confident on the day. Which leads me to the next tip. Top tip number two. Expect the unexpected. No matter how well prepared you are, there will be at least one question you hadn't anticipated. That's not a problem for you, though. Don't forget to breathe. Count to ten. Smile. Always acknowledge the audience question with a ready-to-go expression. For example, that's a very relevant question. Thank you. This will give you some extra time to come up with your response. Top tip number three. You're in control. You're an expert in your field and people have chosen to listen to your talk. If the question and answer session starts going in an unwanted direction, then you have the power to bring it back on track in a diplomatic way, using set phrases and conditional forms. For instance, I see your point here, and we could look into this in the future. For now, though, I recommend we stick to the issue at hand. Similarly, if a question is taking too long, don't hesitate to politely interrupt the speaker using an appropriate non-violent hand gesture to support your request. If the challenge is mainly due to a strong accent or rapid delivery, you can lead the discussion by checking that you've understood correctly and asking the speaker to reformulate. I didn't quite catch all of that. If I understand correctly, you'd like me to explain my research? Is that correct? Top tip number four. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Never underestimate the importance of your tone. It's difficult but essential to sound sincere even when acknowledging the most difficult question or thanking someone for actually questioning your life's research. Note the difference between thanks for your question versus thanks for your question. Always remain polite and professional. Your audience will know the difference, making the impact of your Q and A more positive. Top tip number five, keep your options open. Maybe the challenging question can't be answered satisfactorily within the specific time limit of the Q&A. Perhaps you have a very insistent audience member who really wants an answer to her very specific question. Alternatively, you'd like more time to think about the question. In all three situations here, it's advisable to keep the communication channels open. You could suggest alternatives. For example, I can recommend further reading on that very subject. How about we discuss this further after the Q&A? I'm also happy to reply to emails. My address is on the slides. Face-to-face -face conferences often offer informal moments where you can exchange with other participants at an evening cocktail or over a coffee break. Remember also that the difficult question could mark the beginning of a fruitful future collaboration with a colleague. We've now reached the end of module three. I sincerely hope you feel better equipped to handle question and answer sessions after your conference talk. In this module, we have assumed that the questions come directly after your talk. However, our advice is equally valid for questions throughout, or could even be transposed to a classroom situation if you are both professor and researcher. We have provided generic advice for communicating within an international scientific community. This is why we did not mention the use of humour when dealing with challenging questions, as it is culture-specific and potentially dangerous if not handled with care. Thanks for your participation. Now it's time for one final challenging question. Are you ready for your Q&A?